Female instrumentalists were a lot rarer than female singers, but those who did manage to secure training and get to a professional level found it enormously difficult to secure a job. In the 1940s, because of this difficulty and the opportunities presented to women because many of the men were at war, a tradition of all-female bands began. One of the first and most successful of these bands were the International Sweethearts of Rhythm. Sweethearts were formed in a small school in Mississippi, the Piney Woods School. Indeed, there are a lot of correlations between how the Sweethearts were formed and the formation of the celebrated all-female ensembles in the 16th and 17th centuries in the orphanages for abandoned girls in Venice. The Piney Woods School was founded in 1909 by visionary black scholar Dr Lawrence C. Jones, Jones was from a poor background and was inspired to open an establishment where other poor African-American children could be educated. Like the schools in Venice, Piney Woods had a robust music program and several groups that toured because music was seen as not only a good professional vocation but also as a fundraising opportunity for the school. Here are some of the original members of the Sweethearts discussing its formation at the Smithsonian in 2011. So how did you pick the trombone? I like watching the slide go up and down, you know. <laughs> like, oh, I, could, I could go up and down too, so why the hell do I, why don't I take that, play that instrument, you know? So how many hours a day did you practice? Pardon me? How many hours a day were you practicing? Well, I don't know about that. I was just practicing any time I wanted to. Because we could go over to the dormitory, you know, practice maybe an hour. But I've been kind of lazy. Half an hour was long enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> but now this band was really together. And how did you, what about practicing and rehearsing once you were traveling around What's and you were working, you hearing? know, with... You're a little hard of hearing. Yeah, but no, no. <laughs> I, can, saying, I can hear the things I want to hear, though. <laughs> <laughs> We, we want you to hear everything hey, that Sally is saying. If you, right, if you hear this band, you know they didn't just practice for half an hour. One of the things that um, I, I want to say about Grandpa, um, Grandpa and his wife, Grace, were very, very, very strategic with the use of music as a fundraiser mm -hmm. because they had the Cotton Blossom Singers and they also had the band. Uh, the bands, it, there were more than one. The uh, guys had a band because in those days, one of the reasons they were an all-girls band was Grandpa did not believe in co-ed anything. Uh -huh. The girls were in one section of the campus and the boys were in another section of the campus. And only for a certain number of minutes, not even hours a day, were they allowed to talk to each other. Oh. Mm -hmm. They were totally segregated. But they understood that music was a very effective fundraising vehicle. And so they put a lot of emphasis on the music, uh, be it uh, vocal or be it instrument. And to this day, Piney Wood School, 101 years old now, continues that tradition of having great vocal and instrumental talent at the mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, was it also uh, an, an idea of his that this would create new options for young African American women in terms of the economy? And I will ask Ms. Ms. Woods to address it or? Roz, um, oh. uh, what she's asking is did Grandpa see music as an option for young women as an opportunity for career paths? His sister taught Coleman Hawkins music. Mm -hmm. So he was interested in music from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. 
And when he saw Phil Spitality had the radio show on Sunday years ago, it was Phil Spitality and it's all girl band. He says, I got a bunch of women here, why don't I start a girl band? You know, and this is how we, we the Sweethearts of Rhythm became, you know, the, uh, the, 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 what they are, you know. Mm -hmm. I'd say, did yeah. you ever think of it as a career option compared to something else that women were doing during those days and times? Well, yes, I did. From the moment I, Constable Carter put a trumpet in my hand and told me to blow, and she, mm -hmm. she would point to the notes and die, die, die like that. So you didn't I, choose the trumpet again. It would, you were told that you would learn to play yes, the trumpet. but she, she started me on the coronet in the band, in the marching band. So I went from John Philip Sousa to Louis Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we as uh, Lily spoke, uh, we did travel around, in and around the state of Mississippi with the marching band. Mm -hmm. So then Mr. Professor Jones got the idea that uh, we, he should have a swing band. So then the, as cornet player in that band, <laughs> Constable Carter, who was our music teacher, put a trumpet in my hand. And I played that trumpet until <laughs> Forever, that was it. That was my life. We went on the road with the. Uh, he named the band the International Sweethearts of Rhythm. At that time, we had uh, this girls from all walks of life, but he insisted on calling it international because so many of the girls did. We had Indians, we had Mexicans. Puerto Rican girls and, and uh, Chinese. Chinese, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I would, Willa May is not here. She's in the wheelchair. She's the little, I'm sure you saw on the pictures with the long braids with Willie May Wong, Willie May Lee Wong, and Helen Jones, and Johnny Rice. The four of us, we are the nucleus of the Sweethearts of Rhythm. Mm The Sweethearts were formed in 1937 and initially played for regional theatres and dances. By 1940, they had gained a reputation and made debuts in the Apollo Theatre in New York and the Howard Theatre in Washington. By 1941, they turned professional and moved to Virginia. They were known for their integration of racial and ethnic diversity and got into trouble several times for breaking Jim Crow laws, especially upon hiring two white females. The band consisted of Latino, Asian, Native American and biracial women. Here is saxophonist Rose Cron speaking about her experiences getting into the International Sweethearts of Rhythm. So, Roz, did you think of music as being your future when you all were young and traveling the world playing music? Did you think that is what you wanted to do for the rest of your life? Did you want you all want to ultimately be a Melba Liston or? A, oh, great. <laughs> I don't come close to Melba, but no. but uh, I remember when I was sixteen, uh, Eddie Durham came to town with his all-girl band, and uh, I took my saxophone, went into Boston and up to the Raymore Playmore Ballroom and asked him if I could sit in, and he said, sure. And I sat in, and that was really the first time I had known that girls really play horns and really play real, real music, like here on the radio, and I was just so amazed. 
And I loved it from that moment on. I thought, this is what I'm going to do. So he asked me at the end of the night if I'd like to join the band. And I said, I don't think so right now because I'm in high school and my folks want me to graduate. Uh, but it was in my head. I knew this was something I really wanted to do. And uh, I was playing with male bands uh, in Boston and the war started and there were fewer and fewer male musicians available. So I got to do more and more work and became more experienced in big band sounds and big band uh, way of, of playing. And so I was ready when I graduated in 43 to go on the road, which I did with a, a white band. Uh, some of you may have heard of Ada Leonard and her all-girl orchestra. They had uh, violins and I believe a cello at one point. And it was, it was very good and very fine musicians, but it was not the sound and, that I was looking for and the power that I was looking for. And, um, you're looking for some soul? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, you, you, you've got it. <laughs> you got it. In 1945, they toured Europe with the USO, the nonprofit organization that provides programs and live entertainment to United States troops and their families. The Sweethearts were also one of the few bands to be featured in Soundies or short films that appeared on specially made jukeboxes across America. They also left behind a legacy of recordings, but were especially known for hits of standards such as Tuxedo Junction, Sweet Georgia Brown, and Jump Children. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a real jive tune, Jump Children. <laughs> International Sweethearts of Rhythm disbanded in 1949, but left a legacy that inspired a continuing tradition of all-female bands. (laughs) ¶¶ 